It's July in the southern part of North America, and we are sizzling, so let's knit the top called Sizzle. This movie will be an overview and cover all the supplies you're going to need so that we can start knitting in the next movie. Some of the things you see in these movies will be screenshots from the written version of the pattern. There are actually two written versions. The one you're looking at is the one I sell on Ravelry. There will be another version, slightly different, same pattern information, but it will look different in Country Knitting of Maine News and Views. This pattern flares slightly at the hip. So each of the sizes, and here they are, is this size around the finished hip. There's a seam allowance in the pattern and is 2.18 inches smaller at the busts. I will be able to give all of the sizes in this video because everything is knitted just the same in all sizes. The number of stitches to cast on is the only variation. This pattern is for mid-gauge machines using DK weight yarn. What I used is Ice Alara, which is half acrylic, half cotton, and knits beautifully on all of my mid-gauges. I do recommend the yarn. I really like it. It is available either directly for, from Ice or on eBay. It comes eight skeins to a package. The one package will be enough for many sizes. Here's the number of skeins to expect for the various sizes. But as I am sure you are aware, it's always best to have some extra yarn on hand just to be safe. If you're buying by the yard, six skeins is 9,918 yards, seven is 1,071, eight is 1,224, and nine skeins is 1,377 yards. For those accustomed to using meters, there are some good online calculators, so I won't take up time here with that. Sizes ranging from 32 finished hip to 53 and a half finished hip take from 91 to 150 needles. While some mid-gauge machines do have 150 needles, make sure that yours does if you plan to knit the largest sizes because you don't want to start and discover it was unrealistic to think that your machine could manage it. We'll begin by knitting this tuck lace trim, a strip by itself with some needles out of work, and then hang it sideways on the machine to start knitting the garment. Arm. Here's the basic shape of both the front and the back, and I will explain how this is going to work. Be aware that this diagram does not show the slight flare, though it does in fact exist. After hanging the trim that we've knitted in place of a hem, we will do some short rowing to create the curved hemline. We'll then knit up the main part of the garment, decreasing three times on each side until we get to 15 rows below the underarm. These areas get ribbed, though the center part of the garment remains plain knitting, and this will eventually create an underarm that hugs the body. These little bits of ribbing are in the areas indicated. We then begin ribbing across the entire needle span. I will be demonstrating using a ribber, but I will also explain how it can be done manually. If using a ribber, when we reach the point of beginning the ribbon, we need extra weight on the fabric. I tend to use this kind of comb. Ones like this are very similar, came with several machines. The ones that I can think of are the LK100, HK100, LK140, LK150, and Brother KX350. Perhaps there may be others. These combs don't have to perfectly match the gauge of your machine, to hang safely in the fabric, and the slot in the center is sturdy enough to allow us to hang a ribber weight in it, and I find this to be enough and use it frequently. If you don't have combs like these, there are some that you can make yourself in my Cheap Tricks and Cool Tools collection. And by the way, I will put links in the program notes to any videos that I mention and to any books and patterns so that you can find them easily if you want them. And here comes another video. Brother at one time made a ribber comb 
that had a hinged bar. This bar enabled you to slide any fabric through it and hang weights on the river comb in the normal way. It is absolutely fantastic because it pulls down on the fabric if you use it right without any chance of damage. Here I'm working with a thread lace fabric in the video which shows you how to do it. That is a great thing to have for projects like this one. And the video will help you understand it. It's not terribly intuitive how to thread the fabric through, but once you get it, you'll love it. Now let's talk about gauge. I can get this gauge on either of the two mid-gauge machines that I have. I did this sample on the Artisan, and I used stitch size 7, getting 5.5 inches and 7.33 rows per inch. It is best to make a sizable swatch and to wash it and dry it because cotton yarn, and this is half cotton, does change gauge a bit after knitting. On the KX350, I can get fabric so identical that I can make parts on one machine of the garment and some other parts on the other machine, but it's at a smaller stitch size on the dial. About stitch size 5 gets this gauge on my KX350. Now you know each machine is its own unique self, so that's a starting place for you. Talking of gauge, if you choose to use an alternate yarn and you don't get the identical gauge, in the written pattern is a chart of what you will get following the same instructions. And actually you can choose what you want from the chart and resize using that. The length down this dimension of the sizzle top is about 23 inches. That sounds rather short, but keep in mind that most tops we're measuring from up here. So the way this one hangs will be equivalent to something like a 28 inch length of a normal top. However, if you do want it longer, it's easy to arrange. The fingers are pointing to the approximate positions of each of the three decreases. All that is necessary is to increase the number of rows between each set of decreases by however much you want and do everything else the same and the top will come out proportioned similarly just longer. Now about ordering yarn, if you go to do it you will notice that usually it is coming from Turkey which may give you pause. It would give me concern in these times if it weren't for the fact that I have had incredibly fast delivery from this company over and over. The yarn for this project was ordered June 14th and delivered June 17th. I really don't see how they do it. So, you get your yarn together, do your swatching, let it rest, take your measurements, decide what you want, and then come find the next video and we will actually knit this top.